Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 5 of Terraform Zero to Hero series and in this video we will deep dive into a concept called Terraform Provisioners. There is a twist in today's video. I will start with the practical implementation first and then I will move towards the theory part. Why? Because in today's video we will see a day-to-day -day task of DevOps engineer and how DevOps engineer use provisioner with Terraform. So please watch it till the end so that you will learn a lot about Terraform provisioners and you will also understand scenario based questions related to Terraform provisioners. Now before I get started let's quickly recap what we have learned on day four. So on day four we learned about very important concept of Terraform the heart and memory of Terraform, that is Terraform state management. So what did we learn there? We learned what exactly is a state file. We saw how to integrate and how to put the state file in a version control system. If you put that, what will be the challenges? Of course, I've explained why it is a bad practice to put the state file in a version control system and how to overcome that using the concept called Terraform backends. There we learned what exactly is a remote backend and how to use S3 bucket as a remote backend in Terraform. Finally, we covered the concept called locking and locking mechanism of the state file using DynamoDB. So please watch that video. It's a very important concept if you haven't watched. Okay, so let's start with the task, right? So let me clean up my screen. Now I'll explain what exactly is the task that we are going to learn. So let's say there is a development team called XYZ and this development team has a requirement that whenever they modify their application. So let's say they have an application called app.py. So this is a Python flask application, for example. So every time they make changes to the app.py file, they want the DevOps team to create a Terraform project. Okay. And what is the scope of this Terraform project? So to test their changes, they want us to create a VPC. Within the VPC, they want us to create a public subnet. So how do you create a public subnet? Basically, you need to create a subnet first. And for that subnet, you have to create route table and the destination for that route table has to be Internet Gateway. And you need to associate this route table to the subnet so that it becomes a public subnet. We have learned this during our AWS course. And then you need to create a EC2 instance. Deploy this particular application. So they will share us the app.py file. So you need to deploy this app.py file onto the EC2 instance and expose this to the external world so that they shared you the app.py file. You create all of these things and you provide them a URL. Let's say the URL is 3.4.6.7 colon 80. They will just hit this particular thing and they want to verify if their application is working fine or not. So for that, you need to deploy your application on the EC2 instance and you need to configure the security group accordingly because you need to open the port, if the application is running on port 80, you need to open that port so that they can access their application. So if they do this particular thing manually, it will take a lot of time for them, right? They have to create VPC. They have to create all this configuration. They have to make sure that the security group is working fine. And finally, they will be able to do it. So let's say if this is taking one hour of time. And this is just for one developer. So how much time you will save as a DevOps engineer? By creating this particular project, you will save a lot of hours of time considering there will be multiple developers working on that particular project. And then there can be multiple projects, right? So this is a quite common task of DevOps engineer. Now, there are two parts to it. One, the first part is you will set up this entire Terraform project. And the second part is you will integrate this with the CI CD approach. That means DevOps, uh, sorry, the development team 
will not share the app.py file with you i mean they will not share it in an email or they will not share it anywhere what they will do is they will update this app.py file in a github repository and what you can do is you can configure jenkins which will pull or you can configure github actions whenever there is a change it will pull the latest changes of that particular github repository and it will run the terraform so first i will not explain you the ci cd and all that part because it's very very simple if you have followed my uh, devops course or anything you will learn you must have known i mean sorry you might know uh, at this point of time how to set up this thing because this is a very simple thing but the part one is very very important of how to write this entire project and how to deploy the application onto the ec2 instance right so you will create vpc you will create public subnet you will create the route table you will create the ec2 instance but how to deploy this application right i don't want to use terraform user data right why i don't want to use terraform user data sorry ec2 instance user data because in user data you can write a script but let's say you want to deploy a complex project let's say you have 100 files or you know let's say you have uh, a project that is not suitable for user data user data is fine when you want to run a small script or something but when you want to execute a complex project there we will use a concept called provisioners so i'll explain the theory part but before that let me run this particular thing and show you and all of you can by the time i upload this video you will see a folder called day5 and in that particular folder you will see the terraform project and you will see the application so don't worry about that but what you need to do is you need to practice this at your end you can put this thing in your resume because this is a quite common devops task where devops engineer work on such activities on a day to day basis so firstly i have opened the github code spaces i have told you uh, previously also that i am going to use code spaces for this entire thing because for people who don't have laptops or you know people who um, cannot install terraform on their personal uh, machines for some reason because of the resources or something they can use uh, this way so that code spaces will help them to set up terraform and run the terraform projects so i have created a folder called day5 in my code spaces and this is a very simple python application that i want to demonstrate you can show your creativity i just wrote this particular written statement which says hello terraform let's say previously uh, it used to say hello abhishek and now devops engineers uh, sorry the development team has changed this to hello terraform and now they want to verify this particular changes okay so they shared this app.py file with you and i wrote the terraform project with very very detailed steps anybody who follow this particular file they will understand everything but you need to know the steps first right whatever the steps that i have explained you need to know all of these first before you write the terraform project if you don't know these steps how will you write the terraform project right many people are scared about terraform because they don't know the concept of how to create resources manually if you know how to create resources manually writing those things in terraform is a cakewalk right so that's why you need to learn the cloud provider first you need to learn how to create resources manually in the cloud provider only then you will be able to implement things very easily using terraform so see exactly what i have explained you firstly i wrote what is the provider i said provider is aws region is us east one you can change it then i want to create the vpc so for the vpc firstly i have to define the cidr block right when you create aws vpc through the ui what is the first thing that you have to do what is your cidr block that means what is your ip address range so i said 10.0.0.0 hyphen 16 sorry slash 16 then what i am doing is i am choosing my aws key pair right this is a very simple thing what you need to do is on your workstation wherever you are using it just run this particular command called sss ssh keygen minus t r s a 
so this will create uh, sorry ssh key gen there is no hyphen there minus t r s a and this will create a public private key for you in your local and i am just uploading that public key so that i will use that to my ec2 instance right so i want to do this entire project from scratch that's why i am doing it okay so i am creating my key pair then what i am doing here is this particular block here will create a vpc right and the cidr block comes from here so that's why i have defined it if you don't want to variableize it you can just provide the cidr block here as well but it's a good practice to variableize it so i've provided the resource here right and if you don't even want to mention the default like i explained in day 3 or day 2 what you can do is you can provide the value for the cidr from the terraform.tf vars okay then i am creating the subnet see i am following the same order firstly i have created the vpc now i am creating the subnet okay so what i am doing here for the subnet i said the subnet has to be in this particular vpc aws dot aws vpc dot my vpc dot id so terraform will create this particular block it will go and try to create aws subnet and it will understand that it has to put the subnet in this particular vpc and there is no rocket science here entire thing is available in the terraform documentation i'll show you how to copy this blocks don't worry but let me explain the project first so vpc is provided cidr block now this cidr block is for the subnet right this cidr block is for the entire vpc and this particular cidr block is for the subnet then availability zone you can provide do you want any instance created in this subnet should have the do you want to have the public ip or not yes i want the public ip now this subnet if you just create it like i told you this will not be a public subnet what you need to do you need to create a route table you need to create internet gateway and for the route table you have to attach this particular internet gateway as your destination so that's what i am doing here and then you will associate the route table with the subnet see i am not doing anything different from what i have explained here i am doing exact same steps for me writing this particular main.tf just took 10 minutes and this is a cake walk for me because i know how to create this manually if you don't know how to create this manually only then you are scared about it many people are worried about how should i create terraform uh, eks using terraform how should i create uh, a huge vpc setup using terraform just sit down write the steps how do you do that manually on the aws console if you know that then you can simply write it using terraform we will do that as well i'll show you how to create eks project using terraform but like i told you if you know it how to create manually then that's not a big deal finally i told you that i want to expose this particular instance uh, application on the instance public ip address so that's why i am providing a aws security group i am creating it and in the ingress configuration that means in the inbound configuration so in terraform inbound configuration is represented using ingress outbound configuration is represented using egress okay so in egress uh, sorry in ingress i am saying open the port 80 as well as 22 22 is for ssh let's say something went wrong you can ssh to the instance and you can see it can go wrong in the particular demo as well i don't know if it goes wrong i'll log into the instance and i'll fix it then i am exposing the port number 80 egress configuration if the instance want to uh, access anything from the outside world you can just provide the egress configuration right finally this is the ec2 instance configuration so this is a key one right what i am doing in the ec2 instance configuration i am providing what should be my ami what should be my instance type what is the key value pair right key value pair i have created here i am not using any existing key value pair so what i am doing aws underscore key pair dot example dot key name so that is exactly what i have mentioned here aws key pair dot example dot key name security groups definitely you have to provide 
subnet you have to provide right we are following the same steps here and then comes the part that we want to learn today so if you just provide all of these details what would happen all these steps will be created vpc is created subnet is created route net ec2 instance security group and you will also get a public ip address for your instance but one additional thing that we wanted to do was to deploy the application now how will you deploy the application because terraform is meant to create infrastructure right using terraform we will create the infrastructure but there is a concept in terraform which is called as provisioners we will learn the theory part in next 5 minutes but this provisioners for now just understand that using provisioners you can deploy this application on the ec2 instance provisioners is a very very powerful concept there will be a lot of scenario based questions so we will see the implementation and when i explain the theory part i will explain the use cases of provisioners and what are the different types of provisioners right so using the provisioner what i am doing is i am just deploying the application so if you see here if i scroll down so instance is created till here then what i am doing is i am telling terraform how to connect to the particular instance that it has created so for that i am saying use the protocol called ssh the username because i am using a ubuntu instance the username is ubuntu and i am providing the private key information right because public key is uploaded to the uh, ec2 instance or the is uploaded to the key pair resource of aws but to connect to it you need a private key that's what we do right ssh minus i private key so same steps you have to provide to terraform as well and what is the host details that is what is the public ip so because you are already in this particular resource block you can simply say self dot public ip so if you are outside this resource block to connect to that particular instance public ip or to get the instance public ip you have to say resource dot resource name dot public ip but if you are already in that particular resource whether you want to access ami whether you want to access instance type whatever if you are in, inside that particular resource block you can use the self keyword and say self dot ami or self dot public ip so that's what i am doing here host is self dot public ip right so i have connected to the ec2 uh, EC instance using terraform now i will use provisioner to use provisioner you should firstly definitely connect to the instance now using provisioner what i am doing is don't worry about this particular thing what is a file provisioner what is remote exec because i want to do the demonstration first i'm just showing you so there is a particular provisioner called file provisioner using which i'm copying this app.py onto the instance so source i have provided as app.py and destination i'm copying it one particular location and then i'm using another provisioner called remote exec and i'm executing all of these commands on that particular ec2 instance what i'm doing i'm installing the ubuntu related packages for python and i am executing the python application from the terraform itself right now let us try to see if this will work or not if there will be any issues i'm ready to fix it firstly let me do the terraform destroy if there is already something okay it said terraform destroy is successful there is nothing now i'll do terraform in it because i am not using any remote backend or you know i am not using any special configuration for the provider the initialization took very little time now if i do terraform plan it will show oh sorry i need to switch to the directory first right so i switch to defy now if you want you can do terraform in it one more time initializing the backend right there is no initial uh, there is no uh, backend provider so it will take very little time now let me run terraform plan and show you so the terraform plan will clearly show you that it is going to create all of these resources what is that one is it will create vpc two it will create the uh, key value pair three it will create subnet four it will create route table five it will create internet gateway six it will associate the internet gateway with your subnet 
seven it will create ec2 instance eight it will associate the security group with the ec2 instance that is in the ec2 instance configuration only so overall there has to be eight resources that terraform has to create see uh, what does it say no changes your infrastructure okay let me execute terraform destroy i think uh, i have uh, this particular configuration already uh, on my aws when i was doing the demonstration okay uh, we will delete everything and then we will re-execute the terraform plan always do the terraform destroy right so it says eight resources are destroyed the reason why you have to execute terraform destroy is sometimes you might uh, use a lot of terraform uh, projects sometimes you might download mine you might download someone else's and you start working uh, learning terraform and if you forget that manually deleting those things will be very complicated that is one and two if you forget you will be built by aws right when i was doing the giveaway i saw many people saying that oh we lost around uh, 50 dollars we lost around 60 dollars someone said that uh, the aws billing went up to 20000 inr as well so why does that happen you create some nat gateways you create some public ip addresses elastic ips load balancers and you just forget right so don't do that always good practice is to run terraform destroy if you want the terraform to create project one more time just run terraform apply right so let's do terraform plan and it has to create the eight resources that we talked about so this will take time uh, so it said eight resources to add perfect now let's run terraform apply perfect let's see how does this go so it says eight resources to add what are those eight resources exactly what we discussed okay i'm not repeating it one more time i don't want you people to get bored as well <laughs> okay so now you will see that it will not create it will not just create the resources but it will also run the scripts right this is a new part what we are learning today previously we learned how to provision infrastructure using terraform but we never learned how to create uh, or how to execute scripts uh, scripts on the created resources using terraform and that's where your provisioners will come into handy and they are very very powerful like you have seen in today's video that will eliminate any manual intervention you don't need any complicated user data scripts or you don't need anyone's manual intervention they don't have to log into the instance at all and your application is available so you are reducing developers one hour time not just by implementing ci cd or not just by provisioning infrastructure using terraform but you are automating the end-to-end -end process this is called zero touch automation because they are not doing anything they are just creating a jira request or they are just executing the terraform project that you shared with them if it is integrated with ci cd they'll go to jenkins and run it if not they will just go to their machine download terraform and execute it right and they will get a public ip address all that they need to do is just access that public ip address and test their application so see how devops engineers are extremely handy for the developers that's where the developer operation comes into picture so now while i was explaining you what happened is that the instance got created and terraform is installing all of these packages right so terraform connected to the ec2 instance it copied the file and now it is installing whatever we have mentioned right so i said apt update it is currently running the apt update then it will install python pip then it will switch the directory because i have copied the file to this particular location then it will install flask and it will run the flask application okay so let's see what has happened it said the execution is totally successful it has installed all of these things perfect now i hope this is all good let us go to the ec2 instance first so for that what i need to do is just go to my ec2 tab right and let us see if it has created an ec2 instance perfect there is only one ec2 instance that is running and it is still initializing that means this is a ec2 instance that we just created 
you can also provide the name to the ec2 instance simply provide a tag right now let us log into this particular ec2 instance right so how do i do that just copy this one and you can take a new tab here click on this plus button and it will give you a new tab so that your terraform things is in one particular tab and your this thing is in a different tab now what i'm going to do is i will log in ssh minus i because i have used public ip uh, sorry key value pair on my particular machine so i can just say ssh id rsa ubuntu at the rate instance so it will allow me to log in and let us see if uh, flask is installed python is installed and everything is working fine right so sorry uh, okay ls so app.py file is copied right what is the location home ubuntu app.py that is exactly what we mentioned right we ask the file provisioner to copy the file uh, where exactly is it right to copy the file to this particular destination and then i have asked the remote exec to run all of these commands so let us see if python is installed first perfect there is python here i think python comes by default but we have installed pip right so let us see if uh, pip is uh, there or not so how to do that uh, if you just execute this particular application right uh, let us see first if the application is running or not right that would be easy thing so i can do ps minus ef let me use sudo sudo ps minus ef i am just seeing the running processes ps minus ef grep let me see if there is any python process that is running so it said that there is no python process running okay why um strange okay let us see if we can execute that sudo python3 app.py okay it is executing it now let us open this particular address and see what is happening so it should not be https uh, make sure you remove that perfect it said hello terraform okay there is no problem uh, for some reason uh, this particular command did not get executed i can check what is happening i think it is running as a background process and probably because we are running it from here uh, that is not get uh, getting reflected we can modify this particular thing uh, but for now what i have done is i logged into this particular instance and i have executed the app.py command okay this is not a, a big deal you can simply uh, log in i'll troubleshoot and see what is happening or what is going wrong but what i have done here is i have just logged into the instance and i have run this particular last command that is python3 app.py now see what has happened developer has shared this app.py file with you and this entire project is executed right they got the ec2 instance they got the vpc configuration they can simply verify that if their change is perfect or not and if their change is perfect they can say that the verification is done thank you so much devops team perfect so this is the demonstration now let's learn about the theory part right so what exactly we did so i hope you all know from here to here what exactly we have done i need to focus on the provisioners part right so what exactly is a provisioner so if you watch the demo carefully what exactly has happened is that we just did not create the infrastructure but we use this concept of provisioner to execute plus implement some actions during the creation right so what did i do at the time of creation of ec2 instance i have copied the file plus i have executed some commands right so provisioners are resources in terraform or provisioner is a concept in terraform that will that will let you to copy some particular things or execute some particular actions 
at the time of creation, not only at the time of creation, but you can also use provisioner at the time of destruction. That means during the deletion of resources also, you can use this concept called provisioners. By default, if you execute, it will run like, let's say you have created a provisioner concept in your Terraform project. By default, if you're not providing anything, they will run during the creation. But if you want to run them during the destruction, you have to tell inside the provider block that please run this particular activities during destruction. Now let's try to understand why will DevOps engineers use uh, this provisioner concept during creation or destruction? And what are the different types of provisioners? So as a DevOps engineer, right, when you are using Terraform, you will see some challenges with Terraform. That means even Terraform is very, very powerful, but still it lacks some basic things. Example is what we have seen in the particular task, right? So using Terraform, you have created EC2 with all the required configuration, VPC and all, but you were not able to install the Python if you don't use provisioners. So what will happen? Let's say if Terraform did not have a concept called provisioner, the problem would be you need to use any other tools like Ansible, right? Or you need to use a shell script to connect to the instances, right? If there are thousand instances, so you need to use Ansible to connect to it for this very simple task to just run the Python application. You have to write a Ansible playbook or you have to write a shell with connecting to the instances and you have to execute all of these things. So to solve this problem, Terraform said, okay, don't worry. I will provide you two things. One is called as remote exec provisioner and the other is called as local exec provisioner. So what does remote exec provisioner do is if you are using remote exec provisioner at the time of creating EC2 instance itself, you can connect to that particular instance or you can connect to that particular resource. And what you will do is you will execute any kind of commands. It can be installing Python, it can be installing Node.js, it can be installing uh, Java, right? Anything. So any shell commands that you want, it can be one shell command, it can be 100 shell commands, it can be 1000 shell commands. It does not matter. Using remote exec, you will connect to the instance at the time of creation of the instance and you can run all of these things. Then there is something called as local exec. So local exec is a fairly simple thing. So let's say uh, you want to print anything on the console. Okay. While running the Terraform project, you see that Terraform prints a lot of things, right? So here Terraform prints that, uh, okay, you are this particular resource is created, right? Uh, your EC2 instance is created. But during the creation itself, if you want to say that, uh, just print a echo statement for your customer or your user saying that, okay, uh, Terraform has done one out of eight task. Terraform has done two out of eight task. Or you can just say, uh, create a file. Okay. You can create a file uh, for your entire Terraform execution. Now, by default, what Terraform does, whenever you run a Terraform apply, sorry, whenever you run a Terraform apply, Terraform will print everything on the console. Okay. All the resources that it is creating, everything is in the console. Now, let's say I want to go back and see the Terraform output. I can't see because, see, I'm scrolling down, but I'm not able to see because your terminal has a specific number of lines that it can show. But what if your Terraform project has some 10,000 lines of output? So instead of printing everything on the console, along with printing, what you can do is you can use the local exec. Okay. And you can ask Terraform to copy all the output to a particular file. Okay. It can be anything like you can show the progress of your execution in this particular file. You can say EC2 instance is now created. Subnet is now created, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You can print all of those things. So this is about local exec. I've explained what exactly is a uh, remote underscore exec, right? Now, along with this, there is one more very important thing called as file provisioner. File provisioner is basically the name itself says that it is used to copy the files. Okay. Let's say you have created a RDS instance or you have created an EC2 instance. And in that particular EC2 instance, 
you want to copy some 10 files. It can be source code, it can be some configuration files, it can be some JSON files, YAML files, whatever it is. Okay, so using the file provisioner, you can copy the files. That's what we did, right? So that's why I did today's demo with both the file provisioner as well as remote exec. What I've done is I've used the file provisioner to copy the app.py onto the instance. And then I've used the remote exec to copy the file, sorry, to execute the file that is copied using the file provisioner, right? So you can, use local exec as well in this particular demo and just print that uh, hello that terraform execution is going on right now the instance is created right or anything that you would like to you can maintain a single file and let's say you have 10 resources so here you have one resource here you have two resource three resource in all of these things what you can do okay of course you cannot do it here because these are security groups and uh, other things but for some resources uh, example here when you are using the EC2 instance here, what you can do is you can write the local exec and you can print anything on this particular terminal or in a particular file, right? So this is about uh, today's video. I will cover local exec in some other demonstration uh, because I don't want to complicate this particular thing. Probably when we do the EKS cluster creation or uh, when we do the complicated project using Terraform there, I will show along with the local exec. I will also show the remote exec because there it is most needed as well. When we are creating such complicated projects, provisioners will come a lot of handy. The reason why we are learning these things like day one, day two, day three, four and five, why we are learning things with scenarios, why we are learning things with theory and practical, because they will help you in creating big projects. These are day to day tasks of DevOps engineers, but why you are scared when you want to create EKS cluster because some people don't understand the concepts that we are learning in day one to day seven. And if you want to directly create EKS cluster using Terraform, EKS cluster will be some thousand lines of Terraform script. For example, they will be scared. Okay, it is very complicated. Terraform is very complex. But if you don't have the basic knowledge, yes, Terraform is con complex. But if you have the basic knowledge, I just wrote this hundred lines in just 10 minutes. Of course, I'm using this IDE, I'm using the plugins. I have taken help of documentation, but it is very, very simple because I know the concept. Whenever I'm getting some doubt, let's say I don't know how to, I don't remember the syntax of remote exec. What I'll do, similar to you people, I'll just go to Terraform documentation and I'll search for remote exec. Okay, so Terraform will give you the entire thing. See, it gave me, it gave me the syntax that I'm using. What did it say? resource aws instance web it provided me the connection block it provided me the remote exit block and this particular thing i just removed this particular lines and provided my things see this configuration is exactly same in my case i just said connection i use the remote exit provisioner i use the inline and in inline instead of puppet i use the python script right isn't it amazing Perfect. Now there is one simple task to you people. I want to see if how many people are following it, right? How many people are actually understanding what we are doing with Terraform. So try to execute this project and let me know in the comment section if you are able to do it or not. And finally, try to debug what exactly went wrong here, right? It's a very simple thing. If you try to understand what exactly is happening, you will understand where and what exactly did we miss? But uh, it's okay when you are trying to do the initial demonstration, follow the same video. And if this particular thing is missing in your case as well, just try to log into the instance and execute the command. And in the comment section, let me know what went wrong. What did I miss in this particular action and why the Python did not run or why the Python application did not run directly using Terraform. So all this 101 lines got executed but what happened to this particular line. Okay. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope this video is very, very helpful to you people. Let me know in the comment section, what is the feedback and how did you find this day to day task of DevOps engineer? And are you confident that you will do this particular task? Thank you so much for watching the video again. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.